making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. All right, so here we are. I just started a new project in Premiere Pro uh, because I had to wait for all those files to render from the prior demos. All right, I didn't. I really didn't. Uh, I stopped that. I, I, I wasn't going to sit here and watch it render. Instead, I've, I've decided I was going to move and forge ahead and, and show you guys how to bring in a sequence of photographs that you may have shot for the purpose of time lapse. And how you shoot that stuff, that's all covered in the ebook. Shut up and shoot. Uh, hopefully, you did it with an intervalometer. And hopefully, you shot in super high res, too. Now, first things first, I am going to simply define where I'm going to be working and I'm just doing this for my own purpose so that I can create a new project and keep it organized with my other files and I'm gonna call this image sequence demo and now I'm gonna open the project and basically this is kind of interesting I really can't tell you gee you know use this or use that uh, as far as incoming codec because we're dealing with an image sequence so in essence I would just pick something that you commonly use and I'm, I'm going to stick with a digital SLR for the simple purpose that it's going to open up HD windows for starters okay uh, I could go to red and do 2k or 4 4 and 5k but for the intents of this and and I, I can't emphasize this enough just play with these different things to see how it looks uh, like this is a 4k 16 by 9 which we could do right now and I might do a tutorial on on how you go to that but if I go into this realm what I really would want to do is use Adobe After Effects to generate those sequences because Adobe After Effects is truly designed for that purpose. The other problem with products like Premiere Pro or even Sony Vegas is they don't know how to deal with camera raw so you can only bring in JPEG images. So let's keep it simple for now and we're just going to go with a standard 1080p uh, 30 frames per second or 29.97 and I'm going to call this pick sequence one and I just I'm giving it a name arbitrarily which I can change later but anyways I'm gonna open this project and I'm gonna show you the first part on how you actually go and grab it and, and what this pick sequence one thing did it just created a timeline for me which is somewhat important because we're going to use that so here we go all right I am going to double click in my project window and I am going to go and hijack me some footage and let's go right here because that's where we're working and I'm going to grab series one and what we have here is a sequence of JPEG images starting at image number 9490 going all the way through 9640 so we have quite an interesting scenario here. And you'll notice that automatically there's this little box here called numbered stills. And if I click that box, it will bring in the whole sequence. So this is not the file name. It's actually just happens to be the first image of that sequence. If I turn that off, it will only bring in that image. And so with one picture, we can't do a lot. So we want to bring in the whole sequence. This is a time lapse. Of course, all supported media. And as you can see, it does not support camera raw. So don't even try to bring in camera raw because it doesn't see it. It doesn't recognize it. 
even under all supported media. But JPEGs are fine. All right, I'm going to open this sequence. And now we have a really interesting thing. We have obviously a sequence that is five seconds and one frame long at 29.97. And it has a resolution of 5184 by 3456. This is what the camera shoots at when I take still picture sequences. So these are very large images, physically meaning in resolution size, but they're not as large as what your camera raw files would be. So we're good to go. This isn't too bad. Another thing that's really interesting is if we go to properties, we can see a little more detail that the file size is 6.6 .6 megabytes, and that is per image, not for the whole file. So this is kind of neat just gives you a, a, an idea so that you can look and see what the heck it is that you just loaded okay if we go into the interpret footage of this clip which is kind of important to look at once in a while we go to modify and interpret footage this is kind of important because you want to make sure that your frame rate is always set correctly and if you need to change it this is where you can do that so that you can make this uh, let's say a 25p or 24 frames per second of course then you need to change your project as well just be careful when you do this you do need to experiment with this a little bit to make sure that things jive so do a couple of tests before just jumping in and doing a whole bunch of things and then finding out that they're not working in any case so I have my image sequence here and I can literally drop this into my source and now you can see that wow this image looks a little bit different than this one it's well it's actually right but it's not HD so that's kind of a problem because output is going to be HD so let me drop this down onto the timeline and so this is what would actually render out so we're missing some of this image aren't we so I need to do some things here to make sure that this works I can actually go to the effect controls and this takes a couple seconds because we're dealing with images and images eat up a lot having problems there we go all right so here we are in the effect control and I'm going to go and look into the video effects and here you can see that I can actually take this master file and start scaling it so for example if I start scaling it down all of a sudden more of the image comes in so this is how you would make your super large photographs fit into the true HD frame and it just so happens 37 point five percent is about safe and then of course you can also rearrange it right here you can size it by grabbing one of these handles and notice that it keeps the aspect ratio intact let's make that a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit more all right let's go to 25 percent so that you can see the full frame here so that's the full frame and all I'm doing is resizing to make it fit into my HD window so to speak okay so we can also rotate this if we want and of course we can do all kinds of fancy stuff with this we could add effects and so on and so forth but the really important thing that I want to point out is, is you can actually do hmm, let's call them fake zooms so for example if I zoom in on my timeline and I'm right here at the beginning and I'm zoomed in or I'm basically taking the wide shot of the photo sequence I can literally turn on my key clock so to speak and then move my cursor or my scrubber to the end of that clip and I still have my key clock on and now I could literally zoom in and so what will happen is that sets another keyframe 
and so as time goes by I'm actually zooming in kinda neat these are some of the things you can do with these large resolution sequences but for all intents and purposes I just want to get that scale to 37 0.5 just to make a simple clip for right now turn off the clock because we don't want it to change over time I can also do rotation and do verticals I can change position or I can just grab the thing and just move it right here very nice downside it only does it with uh, JPEG files so but anyways this is how you bring in an image sequence drop it into your timeline and then go into effect controls and you can resize it and adjust it and make all kinds of things happen to it again now we have our work area so I could literally just basically say hey control M and throw it right into my render queue and again make sure you have the proper codec selected just like in the other videos and that's as simple as it gets with doing image sequences in in Premiere Pro it's not as powerful as Adobe After Effects of course um, you can do some adjustment I'm gonna cancel this real quick you can go in and start doing all kinds of things and changing and then adding effects and doing color correction and all those kinds of things if you deem it necessary so keep that in mind learn how to use Premiere Pro if that's the product of your choice anything that you can do with video you can do with a sequence of photographs but the key thing was I wanted to show you how you bring in a sequence of photographs it's pretty much a no-brainer get to that first photo and don't forget to get that checkbox so that when you click on here remember this checkbox right here numbered stills and you're good to go so have fun and uh, I want to do a control M here because I think this is cool hello hello oh. control M make sure your codec set correctly cue it and there we go and remember I lied I didn't render any of those files but here's my pick sequence and it's ready to go hey now I can walk away after I click this button. There you have it. Enjoy and uh, lots of luck and go out there and shoot some good stuff and uh, bring some nice footage to the world. Have a wonderful time. Bye.